Please uh, continue to uh, pray for uh, the cruisers as they are recuperating and uh, for Justine. Um, she's not uh, feeling well uh, today. Uh, and uh, pray for Brother Joe. And uh, Brother Joe uh, is not here today because uh, he has to go to the uh, test. No, um, his uh, boss uh, called him this morning and uh, said that um, the boss is in is uh, positive, and uh, so Brother Joe has to uh, go and uh, be uh, tested. So please pray for Brother Joe. Okay, he will uh, he will try to catch up with us. Okay. So, uh, if you have uh, your your video, please uh, just uh, uh, leave your video on so I can uh, I can see you and uh, I can preach, um, knowing that you are there. Uh, Okay, so uh, this morning I'm going to uh, preach to you about the uh, the uh, reality of hell. Okay, the reality of hell, and uh, as real as uh, the Bible's teachings on uh, heaven, uh, uh, it's all the same. The uh, teachings on the reality of hell. And um, I know that this is not um, a popular subject, okay? And uh, nor a popular place because nobody wants to uh, go to hell. And it is uh, as negative as teaching as, in, as uh, is found in scripture and is taught as emphatically as any truth in the Bible. And the Bible tells us a great deal more about hell than about heaven, you know, uh, because uh, the uh, reality is that um, God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. In fact, hell was uh, made specifically for angels, okay? God doesn't bring man to hell, you know? Hell is specifically for angels, but men decided uh, it's their choice to go to hell, not uh, obeying God, not following God, and uh, as much as um, God uh, has his teachings, but they won't listen, okay? And uh, the Bible says hell is a literal place. And it states clearly that a man will spend eternity in heaven or hell without exemption. Okay. And uh, the Bible teaches hell is a place of torment and punishment for sin. And many cults and false teachers have tried to water down or deny what the Bible says about hell. For example, false ideas about or false ideas of uh, uh, false re religions, okay? false ideas of false religions. Jehovah, Jehovah Witnesses teach that man is simply judged and annihilated after death and there is no eternal punishment. And uh, because the founder uh, is afraid of hell and uh, the founder uh, tried to uh, avoid hell, okay? And so in his teachings, he eliminated hell. But uh, can, can just a uh, teaching that there's no hell, will it be a reality that there will be no hell? Okay? And then the uh, Roman Catholics claim that a man after death goes to a place they call purgatory which is only a temporary place where man must pay for his confess and unforgiven sins. 
and there you are punished for one's individual sins that that were did not confess to the priest and one did not do penance for a while on earth and prayers are offered by the living on behalf of the dead to help them get out of purgatory out quicker and once you are punished enough for your sins you are allowed to go to heaven and that is completely false as Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 stated uh, salvation is received by God's gift of his grace and not of works not of rituals not of ceremonies not of sacraments and certainly not in the in a uh, non-existent place called purgatory and you know uh, the purgatory is uh, a uh, a concocted uh, concocted by the uh, by the uh, Catholic Church during the time because the Catholic, uh, Catholic Church is um, is already uh, uh, bankrupt and they have no money and so they come out with the te teaching of purgatory and so when you uh, when somebody died no and they said that uh, you can pray and uh, you can uh, you can uh, uh, do uh, uh, sacrifice so but you have to pay and uh, it's uh, depend upon the uh, the amount that you are going to pay so that's how they come out with the uh, with this uh, teaching of purgatory and uh, not only the Jehovah's Witnesses okay that only the Catholic Church but the Oriental religions do not believe in hell okay the Orient Oriental religions like the uh, Buddhism Shinto uh, uh, Hinduism they do not believe in hell but in reincarnation okay they do good works while on one's life, and uh, you are re reincarnated, hopefully, to be uh, to be better existence. If you do not like uh, live a life of uh, after death, you may come back a worse state as an animal or maybe a tree. And uh, karma is the ultimate goal of the Oriental religions. And when you reach this state, you become one of the one with the universe and uh, whatever that means. But Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, tells us that as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Okay? And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. When, one, uh, when man dies, his final and eternal destiny is determined. If a person accepts Jesus Christ by faith, he goes to heaven. Paul said of believers, okay, in uh and uh, Second Corinthians five six, Second Corinthians five six. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Okay, and there is not karma. Okay, if a man dies having rejected God's grace, he immediately goes to hell. Okay, and. Uh, Look with me in uh, Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a, uh, 
a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of swords. And desiring to be fed with crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his swords. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gold fix, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto them, unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, nay, father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And they said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So here we can See the story here. First of all, this is not this is not a um, a parable. Okay, this is not a parable because the uh, the story has a name, name of a person. Okay, Lazarus and the rich man, and uh, both of them died, and uh, Lazarus uh, went to heaven, but the rich man went to hell. And uh, it's not being rich or being poor, no, but because Lazarus uh, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and the rich man did not. Okay, that's why he uh, ended up in hell. And then in hell, no, there is torments, torments. Okay, and then uh, Lazarus was. Um, uh, in uh, Abraham's bosom, okay, and uh, there's a great gold fix, which means uh, there's a uh, uh, distance, okay, and that uh, that they would not pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, that would come from thence, okay, and then he said that. He could uh, send Lazarus to uh, to them, no. But uh, Abraham said, "Let uh, Moses and the prophets." What he's saying is that let the word of God preach to his alive uh, brethren, okay. And and if they will hear the word of God, they would be saved. But they, if they would not uh, receive the word of God, they would not be saved. Okay, so we have the uh, the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, we have the uh, the uh, Catholic Church, and uh, we have the Mormons, the Mormons, the Latter Day Saints. And teach that men who live a worthy and faithful life can go to a celestial heaven and, and they become a god and have their own world to rule. And unworthy Mormons go to a lesser heaven and those who are not members of the LDS or Latter-day Saints Church go to a place they call the spirit prison. Okay? And Mormons teach a person can have a second chance, okay, after death, if one is sent 
up in a prison, a uh, spirit prison, a living Mormon, a living Mormon can go to their temple and be baptized in proxy for the person who is dead. And that allows the Mormon missionaries to the spirit prison and explain the Mormon gospel to the deceased person. And if that person accepts the Mormon gospel, then they can begin the process of exaltation with all the necessary works being done in their temples by living person, and they can get out to the spirit prison and go to the celestial heaven. And this is why they are so involved in genealogical research. They are looking for the names of dead people who they can baptize in proxy. Okay? And they, they had people baptized in proxy for Hitler. Okay? Hitler, Stalin, and other infamous persons. And, uh, you know, as uh, we have said, that a uh, at that, a man's destiny is already determined. Those who believe God and put their faith in Jesus Christ go to heaven, and the rest will send eternity in hell with no second chance. No second chance. And some say do not, uh, they do not believe in God of wrath. Okay? They do not believe in a God of wrath. They understand that God is love and believe they could not let men suffer in hell for eternity for their sin. Now, God is absolutely a God of love and he desires all should come to repentance. This is why he came to earth. Okay? God incarnate a man to suffer, die, and be resurrected, paying for the sins of all men. Okay? In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not, is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But that all should come to repentance. He freely offers forgiveness of sins and eternal life to all who believe and accept his free will of salvation. However, if a man rejects Christ's sacrifice for him and, and does not care about his eternal destiny, then he prevents God from saving him. Thus, the man condemns himself and shuns the love of his creator. And those who deny hell may have never really studied God's word as to what God himself had said about hell. Now, let's make it clear to start with, God is our creator. And he has revealed in his word, the Bible, who he is and what is truth. The Bible is the authority, and therefore, God, our creator, has written in the way things are. And uh, before we actually get to what God tells us about how, well, what happens to those who reject God and Jesus' sacrifice for our sins when they die, let's look at the scriptures that give us a background about man and sin. Okay? And number one, those who deny hell, those who deny hell do not understand one important fact. Okay? Man is by nature a sinner. Man is by nature a sinner and sinned, and therefore he is under the penalty of sin, which is death. 
which is death. Okay? Now, turn with me in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verses 18 to 32. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may, which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God had showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain, in their imaginations, okay? And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness to the last of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the Creator more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God, them, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their own dust one toward another, men with me, men, with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which must meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, not knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. So, here in Romans 1, 8 to 32, these passages teach several things. Okay? Number one, God's wrath is against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men in verse 18. Okay, man holds the truth in unrighteousness, and the word holds means to hold down or suppress. That means men suppresses the truth. Okay, do not they do not want to, to know the truth? Okay, and then uh God gives every man the truth in verses 19 to 20. God's truth is manifested in every man because God shows it to him. Okay? Even nature shows man that God is the creator. So that's why God reveals himself to every man and therefore man is without excuse. Man is without excuse. Okay? Man knowing God refuses to accept him. And God's truth are not thankful to him and deliberately rejects the truth about God and foolishly has made his religion 
and gods like unto himself and the things of earth. Man willingly sins against God, fully knowing it is wrong and destructive. And Jesus stated the reason in John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verses 19 to 20. John chapter 3, verses 19 to 20. John chapter 3, and this is the condemnation, condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil okay because their deeds were evil for everyone that doeth evil hated the light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved lest his deeds should be reproved now there was re recently a debate Okay, over allowing the teaching of creation by design along with evolution. However, the evidence is overwhelming that life and universe had a designer. Those that are trying to get this included in science classes are not identifying who the designer is or even saying that God of the Bible is the designer but only that the earth and life shows the evidence of design. An, un, an uh, evolutionist who opposes the teaching of design because he says it is not science. He said that if he, as a teacher, was required to teach design in creation, he would spend his time explaining why the science of design in life was not science. No? And what a foolish and silly statement. Is this science that says design is not design? The real problem is this teacher refuses to accept the evidence of the design in the universe because he knows that the design was that we clearly seen in all life and our universe requires a designer. That designer he knows is all powerful and there is no one but Almighty God who, ha, who has such power. And God created us and this universe, whether he admits it or not. So he makes such idiotic statement that this design we see in life and our world did not have a designer. The problem in accepting the clear evidence of design is that mankind has rejected God as a designer and creator of the universe. And to explain away the evidence for design, they made an imaginary idea that life came by evolution from inert matter. It does not matter what they have never found any evidence of evolution ever, anywhere in the universe. They deny the existence of God and therefore can only conclude that if there be no greater designer, that life came from inert, lifeless manner. So Romans 1, 8, verses 18 to 23, explains why this teacher refuses to teach that life has design. You know why? Because he does not want to accept he is God's creation. Okay, so the Bible is very, very clear about the state of a lost man who has or is rejecting God. In Romans 1, 18 to 23, for the wrath of God 
is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hinder the truth in unrighteousness because which is known of God is manifest in them for God manifested it unto them. For the invisible things of him since the creation of the world are clearly seen, being perceived through the things that are made, even his everlasting power and divinity, that they may be without excuse. Because that, knowing God, they glorified him not as God, neither gave, gave him thanks, but became evil in their reasonings, and their senseless heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools and change the glory of the incorruptible God for the likeness of an image of incorruptible men and of birds and of four-footed beasts and creeping things. So Romans 3, 10 to 18 further explains that the heart of those who refuse to, get, uh, to believe in God and thereby reject him in truth, okay, in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. No, not one. And uh, 1 Corinthians 2.14, 1 Corinthians 2.14 tells us that the natural man does not receive the things of God because there are foolishness unto him. Okay. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin enter into the world, and death by sin, and so death pass upon all men, for that all have sinned. And in Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, Revelation chapter 20, tells us the judgment and eternal separation in hell is the second death. And death is spoken of here. Okay. Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that had a part in the first resurrection on such the second death and no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. In, uh, in verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is the second death. Okay? Man can only overcome his old carnal nature to sin when he believes Jesus, okay, and put his trust in Jesus Christ alone as his Savior. When a man savingly believes God, gives him a new nature. Now, Jesus said in Nicodemus, in uh, John chapter 3, verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And 2 Corinthians 5.17 explains, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That simply means that no sinner will enter heaven without first receiving the new birth, which means to be spiritually born. God gives the one who believes in him a new spiritual nature, and he can serve God. He literally becomes a changed person and a child of God. Okay? And Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, verses 3 to 7. Clearly states that every child of God was once a sinner. Jesus said he came into the world not to bring the righteous to repentance, but to save 
sinners. Okay, so the only way to see heaven and it's escape hell is to trust in Jesus Christ as one's Lord and Savior. In Titus chapter 3, verses 3 to 7, we, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diver, diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another, but after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward men appeared not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. According to the hope of eternal life. According to his mercy, he saved us. Okay? No amount of religion, no amount of good works can save us. Only Jesus Christ. Only Christ can give a person the new nature. Only Christ can wash away a man's or woman's sin and declare you righteous and free from any guilt or penalty of sin. Okay? And then, heaven is a spiritual place where there is no sin. Okay? To let one ungenerated or uh, a sinner, okay, an uh, unrepentant sinner into heaven would spoil it. Okay? A person must become spiritual to, a to be able to go to heaven and not an spiritual person could exist there. You see, to know, to know and take the things of God, one must receive the nature of God. The sinner who dies without Christ doesn't have the nature of God. Okay? And some people blame God for the wrongdoing on earth. Okay? Some people blame God for the wrongdoing on earth. Now, you know, this is the important truth that uh, we must understand, okay? God is just. God is just, okay? And he will not violate a man's will. He will not violate a man's will. If a man wants to do wrong, reject God, and live in sin, God will not prevent him from doing so, okay? Because he will not violate us from our uh, choices, okay? God will not make robots of men. Those who do not understand this state that God should intervene. But if God intervene in the daily affairs of men and force them to obey him, they would be no more than programmed and controlled robots. God has made man in his own image, and given him intelligence, emotion, and a wit. Therefore, man can make his own decisions as to right and wrong. Okay? God in the Bible has plainly revealed to man what is right. God reveals to us the way he created things to be. God's way is the best. And if accepted and obeyed, result in the best life we can live. God wants man to willingly do what is right and therefore will not force a person to obey godly principles. God has loved us and he in turn has given us the ability to honestly love him in return, but only if we want to. Okay? God is not responsible for the sins of mankind. Man willingly sins and does what is wrong therefore he is guilty of sin and under the penalty of his sins now there are two hells or two places where the unsaved go after death okay there are two hells 
or two places where the unsaved go after hell. One is the immediate, one is the immediate and temporary, and one and the other final and eternal. Let us look what God has said to us in his word, the Bible. Okay? The first is a place called in the Bible called Hades. Hades. Okay? It is the temporary abode of the unsaved dead. It is translated in the Bible by the word hell. Okay? Now, go back to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Verse 19. Uh, 19 to 23, uh, there was a certain rich man. Okay, and then in verse 23, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and as Lazarus, and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that they may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou doest, that thou in the lifetime receivest, receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside this, between us and you, there is a great gold fix, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So described in this uh, place, okay, it is a place of separation from God. It is a place of torment, and it is a place from which there is no escape. Okay, Hades. Now, Hades or hell is not the abode of Satan. Okay, he was never there. It's not there now or ever will be. Hades is populated with the lost or unsaved who have rejected God throughout history. All those that died throughout all the past history of the earth who refuse to believe in God and receive his forgiveness and grace are there at this very moment. Hades, however, is a temporary place and no one will be and one day and one day will be emptied. Okay? Revelation 20, 11 to 15 it states that at the great white throne judgment all the lost from the ages will be brought before Christ and judged according to their works. In Isaiah 45, 23, God says every knee shall bow to him and Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 states that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. At the great white throne of judgment, okay, as Revelation 20, 11 to 15 explains, every unsaved man on earth, whether small or great, will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the judge, and will acknowledge him for who he is. However, it is too late for them. They will bow before him in judgment. It will happen. There's no question about it. Just like death is a subject most like to avoid. Okay? And many fail to accept. So is this judgment of all who refuse to accept God's free offer of salvation. And the final resting place. Okay? There's the... Uh, temporary uh, place called hell, okay? And the final resting place of the eternally lost is the place called in Revelation chapter 20, okay? 
Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The final resting place of the eternally lost in the place Revelation 20, uh, Revelations 2015 calls the lake of fire. It is also called Gehenna. Gehenna, named after a place outside Jerusalem where the garbage was burned, a place that was always on fire. Okay? The place that was always on fire. It is a place of eternal damnation, a place of eternal torment based on the works a man did in his life. There, the loss of this world will stand on an equal plane, each damned without hope or reprieve. You see, they are offered a reprieve and salvation while they were living and they rejected it. Every person there knew the truth yet consciously made a decision not to believe and not to accept God's redemption and presence in their lives. God is seeking to save all men without exemption, but most men resist or reject God's offer. Let me state again, the Lord Jesus is stated, and this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world and men love darkness, Rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds would be reproved. But he that doeth root cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. You see, God tells us that the wages or end result of all sin is death. In our daily lives, Sin is destructive and causes us, causes us great uh, get pain and suffering. God is a God of love and does not want to see anyone having to experience the hurt and destructive effects of sin. That is why he came to the earth, suffered for our sins, and then died for us that we might overcome sin and have everlasting life and place in heaven when we die. They could have received it by believing God and receiving Christ. Yet, they loved sin too much to give up their wicked ways. So they reject it and enjoy it for a season. Pleasures on, on this world. Now, the folly and stark reality of this decision is made clear to them. It was fun for a moment, but now they are to spend an eternity reaping their just reward. The unsaved and religious people will be there, pleading one by one for Christ to accept their good deeds, church membership, wonderful works. But, you know, look, um, Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 to 23. Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 to 23. Many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we, have, we, uh, have not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Ye that work iniquity. What a terrible thing to hear the righteous judge say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Now, what a pitiful, 
Now let's go back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 20. Eleven to fifteen. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face on earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, the small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were, it, were in it, and death and hell delivered, delivered up the dead which were in them. And there were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now you see, in Revelation 20, 11 to 15, okay, I make this statement, okay, nothing is more pitiful, sorrowful, and utterly tragic than the God loved man so much that even when man rejected his love, he still came and died a cruel death on Calvary's cross. Jesus died and rose again, making total and complete atonement for every sin and act of rebellion ever done by man on earth. Yet, most men, corrupted by sin and their own warped sense of self-worth, chooses to die in his sins and willing to go rather than let God change him, forgive him, cleanse him for sin, and give him eternal life. You know, God did everything for us. God did everything for us. But we made that decision to reject him. Just like an illustration, there is a child story of a king who was proud and very vain. So he asked his tailor to make him the most beautiful set of clothes on earth and lose his head. Lose his head. The tailor thought and thought, but was at loss to come out with what the king wanted. And he knew how what a, he knew how vain the king was. So he concocted a plan to save his head. He pretended to make the clothes and put them on the king. He convinced the king he was dressing him in beautiful clothes. But the king just stood there in his underclothes. When he went out in the court, the king, although he could not see them, was so vain. He told the lords and ladies of the court, how beautiful they were. Afraid of the king's wrath, they acted like he had clothes on. Then the king said, or went out on the street of the town to show off his new clothes. And the people too, afraid of the king, hid the face. He had no clothes on until one little boy shouted out the truth. The king has not clothes on. The king has not clothes on. Now, we can pretend there is no physical death and live like we live forever. We can ignore the truth 
that after this life exists for us, heaven or hell. But the truth is not changed. Hell, as real as heaven, and we will spend eternity in one or the other. You know, some churches and denominations downplay the reality of hell. Some deny it, some make it temporary, and many believing them put their trust in the false teaching and wake up in hell. No one ever born in this earth and given the precious gift of life itself should have to stand on that final judgment and be cast into the lake of fire. But why, oh why, does man reject God? Why does he willingly ignore eternity and enjoying a few moments pleasure that we paid for in the eternal lake of fire? Why does he not now choose the best life possible by believing God and accepting God's forgiveness and salvation? Why not put one's trust in the creator who loved us and made us given it suffered and died that we might be able to have his presence in our lives now and even eternity after we die. Yet so many reject the Lord, reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Many even knowing it, it, it is true, but putting it off or simply ignoring it. It makes, it makes no sense, okay? No sense at all. You know, the Bible says, no man need go to hell. The Bible says, no man need go to hell. If you turn with me in Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It means you need to agree with what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. Confess and believe in thine heart the Lord Jesus. In John 3, 16 and 17, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So those that reject God will face judgment and the second death, as Revelation chapter 20, 11 to 15 clearly says. Now the question is simple. The question is simple. Will you believe God and accept Jesus Christ as one Savior? And receive forgiveness for sin? Will you believe God and accept Jesus Christ as one Savior and receive forgiveness for sin? Or will you reject Christ's sacrifice for you and spend eternity in hell? Or will you reject Christ's sacrifice for you and spend eternity in hell. Now remember, God 
will not force himself on you. God will not force himself on you. It's up to you to believe or to reject. To believe or to reject. Understand that if you will not believe, you in fact are re rejecting Jesus Christ. Okay? Understand that if you will not believe, you will not, you are in fact rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. So, it's up to you. It's up to you. But the reality of hell is as real as heaven. So I hope that we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. But how about our loved ones, our friends, our co-workers, brethren, there's a a call for us because of this reality in hell. We need to take it seriously. We need to take it seriously. Okay, let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for this um, message. Lord, we uh, pray that if there's anybody here who is listening, who's not yet saved, who not yet accepted you as their personal savior and doesn't recognize that they are a sinner, Lord, I pray that you will... Uh, uh, touch their hearts and uh, and clear their minds that only by uh, by repentance by accepting that they are they are sinners that they cannot save themselves that they have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their, as their personal Savior Lord I pray that they will make that decision, Lord, right now, because we know that we do not know the 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 uh, shortness of life, Lord. We do not know when death is going to come, because the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. So, Lord, help us to be prepared for the judgment day. To be prepared, O oh Lord, by uh, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Lord, I pray that you will um, make it clear to us that um, that important decision that we will ever make in our life. And Lord, make it also a necessity for us believers to understand the, uh, the reality of hell, Lord, to, to make us, Lord, uh, more aware that there are people around us, Lord, who are not yet saved and uh, will go to this uh, awful place of hell. And that they will uh, spend also eternity there. So, Lord, I pray that you will help us to to um, to be more conscious, to be more bold in our approach, 
And uh, Lord, help us not to be uh, lazy and, uh, and continue to give us, Lord, the, um, the, uh, the courage and the uh, encouragement to, to go on soul winning, Lord. We thank you for today. And uh, we pray for those who are still sick. Pray for the uh, uh, cruises. Pray for Justine. Pray for Brother Joe. And um, we pray for Mama Plor. Pray for Brother Barry. And uh, may you continue to heal them, O oh Lord, and uh, give them strength. We ask, Lord, all these things in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.